Next, I introduce what I call the five derivatives or the five basic derivatives plus. So what I've done is gone ahead and integrate or incorporate the uh, chain rule, which we'll learn later on, into the five basic derivative rules. So that the chain rule is automatically part of those five rules. And that greatly expands the ability of what we can take derivatives of. So we'll see why these rules are true later on when we introduce the chain rule. But first, we're going to have a feel, a nice intuitive feel for how the derivative process works. How does this work mechanically when we have a function and we take the derivatives? Remember, knowing where the rules come from is important. But knowing the rules is also important. So that's why I'm putting the rules up front. And also when you go to actually do real applications, what really matters is that you know the rules. Because if you have some uh, story problem or some sort of application where you're trying to solve something, you need to sit down and be able to take the rules like that. Say, okay, here's my complicated function. Okay, let's take the derivative. The derivative of this guy is this guy here. The derivative of that one is this one. In calculus two, we'll be going in the opposite direction. We'll start with the derivative and try to figure out what function got there. So if you don't know these basic rules and how they work mechanically, you know, you're sunken for the rest of calculus. So this is the one thing you want to spend a large amount of time practicing and making sure you have them just down. So the five basic derivatives plus so these are the five basic derivatives with bonus features. Um, for each of these, we're going to suppose that we already have a known function and its known derivative. So let u of x be a function with a known derivative u prime of x. So we saw a few examples with just our basic derivative rules where we have a function and, and we can take its derivative. The derivative of x four to the fourth is 4x cubed. Maybe u of x is x to the fourth, then u prime of x would be 4x cubed. Something like that. Or even once we, we can kind of layer this. So if we can start with something like that and apply one of these derivative rules plus to make a more complicated derivative, and then now we know that the more complicated derivative, we can go ahead and use that as a u, and we know it's the u prime and then use it again. So this kind of just layers upon itself and gets larger and larger. Um, so given this function u, so the only thing you need to understand is that u is something that you know, and you know it's derivative u prime. And now here are the five basic derivatives plus. So the derivative of u of x to the power n, right? So this can be some long thing raised to the 100th power, right? something in parentheses to the 100th power. How do you take the derivative of that? If you know what the derivative of the thing in the parentheses is, how do you take the derivative of that thing to the 100th power? Well, the idea is you basically think of this complicated u of x as a variable, basically as a bubble. So if you have the derivative of bubble to the n, right, it's just n bubble to the n minus 1. So let's do that. So it's n times u of x to the n minus 1. There you go. But we're not taking the derivative with, with respect to bubble. This would be d by d bubble of bubble to the n. So if I put a bubble around that guy, I'm not going to actually draw on this because I want to keep the rules nice. But if, this, if you think of this as a bubble, you have bubble to the n, d by d bubble would be n bubble to the n minus 1. But we don't want d by b, d bubble, we want d by dx. So to get that, we have to multiply it by the derivative of bubble. So we multiply it by u prime of x. And that is exactly what the chain rule says. It says, if you have something complicated that's sitting inside of something less complicated, and you know how to take the derivative of the complicated thing, just treat that as one chunk. We have chunk to the n, the derivative of that with respect to chunk is n chunk to the n minus 1. And then just multiply by the derivative of the chunk, or the bubble, or whatever you prefer. So let's continue and see what the rest of the five basic derivatives plus look like. So the derivative of sine of u of x, so you can already see how powerful this is. 
So the derivative of sine is just cosine. So we just say cosine of u of x. But then when we're done, we have to multiply by u prime of x because we're not taking the derivative with respect to u, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So we have to adjust by tossing in an extra u prime of x. The derivative of cosine of u of x. So the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So we get minus sine of u of x and then times the derivative of the inside. So times the u prime of x. So we just multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So this u of x is also known as the inside function. Then we have the derivative of e to the u of x. So the derivative of e to the u of x, we just treat it like normal. It's e to the u of x. And then when we're done, we multiply by the derivative of u. And then finally, the derivative of ln of u of x. Well, here it's going to be the derivative of ln of u, which is 1 over u, and then times u prime. So I'm just going to put the u prime in the numerator. So the derivative of ln of u of x is u prime of x over u of x. So it's the derivative over the original. So when you have ln of something, it's the derivative over the original. So these are the five basic derivatives plus. Okay, so um, let's see a few examples of these in action. So the first one, let's do the derivative of 4x to the fourth plus the square root of x raised to the 100th power. Okay, so this is that first rule. And the first rule is sometimes called the power down rule because the first thing we do is power it down. So we, we take the power and we pull it down. So the 100 gets kicked out front. So we get 100. And the stuff in parentheses just, just sticks around the 99. So we just did it like this thing in the parentheses is a, a, a bubble. We put a bubble around it and it's like bubble to the 100th, 100 bubble to the 99. Just like it was just one thing and we're ignoring the complexity in there. But now that we have this part, we have to multiply by the derivative of bubble. So you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we multiply by the derivative of this. So this is the inside and then it's derivative. So the derivative of the inside, so we're going to add some parentheses. So 4x to the 4 is going to be 16x cubed and then plus 1 over 2 square root of x. Because remember, square root of x was x to the 1 half. So it's 1 half x to the minus 1 half. So there's the 1 half. x to the minus 1 half is 1 over the square root of x. So there you go. The derivative of quantity 4x to the 4th plus square root of x all to the 100th is 100 times the quantity 4x to the 4th plus square root of x to the 99th times the quantity 16x cubed plus 1 over 2 square root of x. So that's already a fairly complicated use looking derivative obtained quickly using easy rules. It would probably take you forever and a day to figure out what this derivative was using the limit definition where you're actually going through and saying, okay, well, what's 4x plus h to the fourth plus square root of x plus h and then the whole thing's to the 100th. What would you do for, with that? I have no idea, but this is straightforward. It's just the 100 comes down, turns to the 99, you multiply by the derivative of the inside. Let's see another one. Y is equal to sine of 3x plus 4. So this is a nice example because we see that a lot, right? So the uh, period is effect affected by the 3, and then there's a phase sh shift uh, for the 4. So let's see what the derivative is. And also, when you take the derivatives of the sines and cosines, they absolutely must be in radian mode. So these rules only work if sine and cosine are in radians. Forget it if you're using degrees. So the derivative, dy dx, well, derivative of sine is cosine. Cosine 3x plus 4. So the inside thing stays the same. Now we just correct by multiplying by the derivative of the inside. 
Derivative of 3x plus 4, 3. So it's just 3 times cosine of 3x plus 4. It's that simple. What about um, e to the 2x squared? OK, dy dx, we rewrite it, and then we multiply by the derivative of the top, 4x. So it's just 4x times e to the 2x squared. Right? Because if we think of, if we put a bubble around 2x squared, the derivative d by d bubble of e to the bubble is just e to the bubble. But then we have to multiply it by the derivative of the bubble. So 2x squared, the derivative of that, the 2 comes down and we get 4x, just like that. Let's do another one. How about the ln? Ooh, this is an interesting one, of x cubed. So in this case, dy dx, so it's 1 over x cubed, and then times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. So this time the bubble is the x cubed, so we just do, well, the derivative of ln of bubble is 1 over bubble. Then we multiply by the derivative of the x cubed, which is 3x squared. Now you'll notice that this simplifies to 3 over x. Now that's very interesting because the original function y is also equal to 3 ln of x. Because that 3, remember, your log rules can pop out front in the front like that. So you get 3 ln of x. Well now take the derivative. So you take the derivative of this. It's just 3 times the derivative of ln of x. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so it's 3 over x. So either way, you get to the 3 over x. So that's kind of an interesting observation there. And lastly, I have a final question. What's the derivative of 2 to the x? Ah, interesting. We saw the, der the derivative of e to the x was just e to the x. But how on earth do you do the derivative of 2 to the x? So when you have an exponential function whose base is not e, so what you do is, is a little trick is to rewrite this so it looks like e to something, right? So how can we do that? Well, 2 to the x, so let's see, is going to equal e to something. So how would we do that? So let's say it's equal to, let's say 2 to the x is equal to e, so let's say we don't know what it is, e to the kx, something like that. We can take the ln of both of these. So ln of 2 to the x is equal to the ln of e to the kx. Now the ln of e to the kx is just kx. And then this 2 comes down, so x ln of 2. And we cancel out the x's, so that k has to equal the ln of 2. So in other words, 2 to the x is equal to e to the ln of 2 times x or e to the x ln of 2. Now this makes sense. Another way to see this is to say, well, 2 to the x is equal to e to the ln of 2 to the x. Remember, e and ln undo each other, so e to the ln of 2 to the x. Well, then we can just let this x come up front like that. So it's really the same as just e to the x ln of 2. It's probably the nicest way to look at it and the, the way I normally look at it but at first I was thinking, okay, how, how would we figure this out if we didn't know? And so I, I just did, used a variable k. But basically, just these three, two sim, you know, these couple simple steps here, 2 to the x is equal to e to the x ln of 2. Okay, so what have we done? Well, y is equal to 2 to the x, but 2 to the x is equal to e to the x ln of 2. Ah, but I can take the derivative of this using one of my basic derivatives plus. So dy dx, so now my bubble is this, so I rewrite it, e to the x ln of 2, and then I multiply by the derivative of the exponent. Now in this case, it's a constant times x, so the derivative is just ln of 2, so multiply it by ln of 2. Of course, e to the x ln of 2 is the same as 2 to the x, so it's 2 to the x times the ln of 2. So that brings me to another derivative rule, the derivative of a to the x, where a is some constant, is just a to the x 
times the ln of a. Notice if you have e to the x, this works because e to the x times the ln of e, the ln of e is just equal to 1. So the derivative of e to the x would be e to the x. But if you have 5 to the x, the derivative would be 5 to the x times the ln of 5, and so forth.